unless you visit uh, osm.org. So, well, this is uh, part of Mumbai. If you want to search where you are, you can say TISS Mumbai. See, because most of you have come from different, different places. Why don't you try to search for your area and try to reach there? Well, my college is Omi Baba Center. So I can type HBCSC here. So this is uh, our center, which is about a kilometer away from here. So one thing that you might see in this particular map, for example, apart from the building and the roads, you also see a lot of green dots. Can you guess what are those green dots? The trees. So what does it mean? That means if the mapping software is yours, you can go to that details. In fact, there is a there are some areas in which we have marked every tree so that we can even keep track of it. In fact, you can write the name of the tree. You can tell what is the girth of the tree, how tall is the tree, and what kind of leaf it has. Apart from that, you can also keep reporting, yes, this tree is flowering right now. This tree is fruiting right now. So that you can even understand the you know, seasonal changes and variations that are happening. OSM.org is exactly like what is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is to write articles, whereas this is to map our places and locations. Both of them have the same policy. The software platform is free software, and the data that is produced is also available to everybody. So which means if you are a research organization, you want all the geolocation tags, you'll be able to download it from that place, and you'll be able to use it for whatever research purpose you have. So this is Creative Commons uh, model. Everybody heard about Wikimapia? And do you know who takes the data from Wikimapia? Do you know who owns Wikimapia? Which company owns Wikimapia? So it's a very misleading name. People think that Wiki is there. Therefore, you think that it's a community-owned thing. It is Google's project. And Google's crowdsourcing project, they call you crowd. You know, they just want your time to be spent on the, their server, you keep adding all the details, integrity need details, and those that data is not yours anymore. On the other hand, if you are using OSM.org, what happens is this data belongs to everybody. There is a very important uh, information about it. So all of you know how to zoom in and zoom out of maps, because you must have already experienced that. But make sure that when your students are going to learn this, they may not have experienced you know, zooming in and zooming out of maps. So you have to guide them. So can they identify their house? Can they identify their college? Can they identify the school in which they study? At least these three things, you should be able to get it off. Then we can go forward. Then you know that they at least have some kind of an idea about how to locate things on the map. And then what we can do is we're going to ask them to make maps. now. Once they know some landmark, then you can start walking from that point and start making maps. So you can take a picture and then upload it also on the OSM. But then when you upload a picture, do tell at what location that picture was taken. That's very important. So what is important here is location data. So what are we doing with uh, OSM? We are doing a citizen science project with OSM, where, as I just said, we want the people to come and participate and tell us which plant is flowering right now. So this is an observation. So people can report observations using OSM. So this is the MetaStudio site, where people are reporting various observations. They're saying that the mango is flowering right now in Delhi. Our neem tree is flowering in Kanpur. Our tamarind tree is flowering at some other place. You may think that, what's the use of this? It's very important. If you dedicate at least one or two trees that are nearby you, and keep reporting every change that is happening on that, and if every citizen does that, or at least every school does it, at least one or two records every day, you're going to have fascinating data because all these trees are the best indicators. They are sensors of weather. If you actually have that kind of data coming from every tree, uh, and even birds, for example, the first time the quail begins the song. So these are the best indicators of the changing weather you would be able to come to know different things. And in fact, in some cases, you can even guess when the monsoon is going to come by just keenly observing the plants and the animals around. 
So after we come back, uh, we will uh, do mapping exercise.